This video was brought to you by Indently.io. Learning Python made simple. How's it going everyone? In today's video, we're going to be learning about two kinds of enums, which I just recently discovered. One is called int enum and the other one's called string enum. And they're actually really simple to use and very cool. So to get started, we're going to import from enum, the integer enum, the string enum, a regular enum, and the auto feature. And the only reason I imported a regular enum is to compare it to both the int enum and the string enum. Anyway, for our first example, we're going to create a class called status. And this is going to be an HTTP status, which will inherit from integer enum. And the first status is going to equal OK, which will be set to 200. Then we will have a not found, which will be set to 404. And finally, a bad gateway, which will be set to 502. And obviously there are many more statuses, but we're just going to keep it as simple as possible with these three. So what is the difference between a regular enum and an int enum? Well, an int enum is just an enum where all the members are subclasses of integers, meaning that we can use all of these as integers. And to demonstrate what I mean, let's create a status of type status, and that's going to equal status Dot OK. Now with this, we can print the status and the status dot value. And what you're going to notice is that we're going to get 200 back for both of them. We're not going to get the actual enum back. We're going to get the value for both of them because now each and every one of these constants or members are being treated as integers. If this was just a regular enum, we would get the status dot OK enum back if we printed the status but I'll change that back to the int enum and continue with the example. Because now that we know that, we can treat this as an integer wherever we want, which means we can continue with simple comparison checks, such as if status is equal to 200, we'll print status is okay, and that will work just fine. But we can also perform other comparisons, such as if status is more than zero, we can output that status is valid and that will work as well. And finally, we can do something silly, such as adding 100 to the current status, and that will give us the output of 300, because now the status is treated as an integer. If we were to do this with a regular enum, we're going to get a load of type errors, because Python does not treat that enum as an integer. It treats it as a status enum. So this will not work with a regular enum, but it will work with an integer enum. And int enum was introduced in Python 3.4, so this is nothing new. But recently, in Python 3.11, we got the string enum. So let's look at how we can use that next. And for this example, I will create a class called role, which will inherit from the string enum. And we will have an admin role, which will equal admin, an editor role, which will equal editor, and a viewer role, which will equal the viewer. And in my other enum video, you probably noticed I used type annotations everywhere. For these examples, I'm not using it because I find that it says it directly in the name, what kind of type all of these types should be. And if you add an integer anywhere here, I'm going to consider that to be quite silly. Obviously, you can still annotate it. That's up to you. I might do that in the future. But for these examples, I decided not to do it because I can see directly in the name what kind of types I should insert here. Anyway, here we have an enum that contains strings. That is the point of the string enum. And it practically does the same thing as the int enum, except with strings, which means that all of the members are now going to be treated as strings. But first of all, let's create a role of type role, which will equal the role.admin. Then we can print the role and the role.value, just so you can see what they contain. And if we were to run this, we will get admin back for both of them, the string of admin. We're not going to get the enum of role, we're going to get the actual value back. And since role is considered to be a string, we can also use all of the string methods with that role. So we can type in dot upper if we want, and it's going to uppercase that value. Once again, if we were to use a regular enum, this would not work. We would first get the enum back, which is role.admin for this one here. Then we would get the value when we call value and role.upper wouldn't make any sense because role object has no attribute upper. That is a string method. So let's change that back to string. So once again, this makes string operations much easier. 
So we can also do something such as if role is equal to admin, print user is an admin. And that will work just fine. Even if I think doing this kind of ruins the whole purpose of the enum, because now we introduce something that we can make mistakes with. But all I want to show you is that you can actually perform those comparisons as strings. I would much prefer if this looks something such as role.admin to minimize those mistakes. Or even better, I would probably do something such as match role case role.admin. And if it's that, we would print role is admin. And just like that, we don't have to worry about case anymore or making any silly typos. We know that if someone enters role.admin, that it's going to be checked against role.admin. But the fact that we can use it as a string is quite cool. So we can also do something such as the user has the role of role dot capitalize. And that's all actually, nothing else to add. And when we run that, we will get this back. The user has the role of admin. And we were able to capitalize that because it is treated as a string. And there's actually one last thing I want to talk about, and that is how we can use auto with a string enum. Because here we literally wrote admin, editor, and viewer, which just mirrored each one of these enums. When what we could have done instead is insert auto for each one of these. So here we can type in auto, auto, and auto. And we're going to remove this. And yeah, we'll just print the rule. And what you're going to notice is that we're going to get admin as an output. It's actually going to use the constant name and lowercase it and use it as the value. So we don't have to write admin or editor or viewer. It's going to use the names here as those values. And we can actually loop through this enum by typing in print list comprehension role for role in role. And what we're going to get output are these roles. Role.admin has the value of admin, role.editor has the value of editor, and role.viewer has the value of viewer. And that was thanks to the auto feature, which auto populates this string enum. And if this happened to be an int enum, it's also going to auto populate it the same way it would auto populate a regular enum, starting with the value of one and counting upwards. But once again, once we have an integer enum, we can start doing silly things such as printing role.admin plus role.editor. And we'll get a new value back such as three, which would be actually really confusing in this context because role.viewer has the value of three. So let's pretend I didn't do that. I just wanted to show you that auto still auto populates the enum. But yeah, that's actually all I wanted to cover in today's video. Do let me know in the comment section down below what you think about int enums and whether you use them in your projects already or not. But otherwise, with all that being said, as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.